All right, everybody, we have a repair video today. Here is my motor shaft, like a pulley key. Um, I was cleaning out my table saw and lo and behold, I find this little guy right on the bottom. It needs to be connected. So uh, not really comfortable using a table saw without all the little parts installed. I'm just gonna need to reinstall this and get the table saw working in a safe way. Oh, and I've never done this before. Never uh, disassembled my saw, so it's gonna be kinda cool because it'll be a learning experience for me and uh, I'll get to know the ins and outs of my machine a little better. Um, it should be fun. I also forgot to mention that the arbor isn't going down all the way, so whenever I try to uh, retract my braid ba blade back into the saw, just a little tiny piece is still sticking out. Let me show you. And uh, I would say that's a safety issue. I need to get in there and figure out what's what's making it hang up like that. You know, it just doesn't want to retract all the way. So yeah, got to fix that too. So we'll dig right on into it. So the first step I got to do, obviously, is to unplug the darn thing. But after that, I am going to go ahead and remove these uh, railings for the fence. Um, turns out I didn't even need to do this step. And I had just wasted a bunch of time um, removing it, A, and then reinstalling it and finding out I have strip bolts and all kinds of hootenanny that I didn't care to deal with. But, uh, well, just I uh, hope you enjoy <laughs> watching me waste my time. Well, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, what? That doesn't look good. That looks good. What the? So, if you like to see people learn from honest mistakes, this is probably the channel for you. Just like this. I can't really think of a better way to waste time damaging something from disassembling something that I didn't need to disassemble in the first place. But I digress. The repair was pretty simple. I just cut the hose and reinserted it. The hose was the only thing that was damaged in, in that accident. And from this point forward, I don't really think any further diagnostics are needed as to the reason my arbor won't go down. But these layers are neat. Um, so I'll just go ahead and finish vacuuming the rest of this out. And we will clean the arbor area. It's pretty bad in there. But before we do any of that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the blade and the riving knife from the saw. This will prevent, from the blade anyway, uh, any injury that I don't want. And the riving knife is just, you know, it's just in the way, so I'm taking it off. This is a great example of the old saying, well, there's your problem, because, well, there's your problem. There's quite a bit of uh, sawdust stuck in there and I am just gonna clean it out so I can have that sucker move freely. And moving freely is what it now does, which is quite nice. Okay, so I've got most of it kind of torn out and into a uh, position to where it's easiest for me to work on. Not saying it's easy, because it's a pain in the butt still. It turns out I didn't need to take off all this um, fencing, uh, mounting brackets and whatnot. Yeah, um, we know. Because my initial plan was to remove the whole top. That means I gotta disassemble all of the motor assembly. Putting it back together might not be so much fun with one person. So that being said, I kinda, shimmied it into a position that I think I could work on it and uh, see how it goes. I'm 
There's nothing worse than uh, working on something and you have standard and metric tools that you gotta play with, so. Okay, a quick bit of context here. I have decided to remove that flywheel and unbeknownst to me and as my luck would have it, the grub nut inside appears to be stripping out. So you're now about to bear witness to many different emotions. Watch as they unfold live right before your eyes. So far, so far we're good. Little Alan, let's go let's start with a three mil and see if that's right. See if I get it right on the first try. No, not even close. Feels like I'm stripping out my Allen wrench here. Yeah. Or maybe I'm stripping out the little grub nut. Or maybe it's not metric. And I need to go get my other set of wrenches. <sighs> All right. Too small. Size up. Oh. But, oh, come on. Unbelievable. I hate this. I hate this. Where nothing is, nothing is easy. Nothing could just be straightforward. Yeah, it's always got to, you always got to be messing around with something. Especially in tight spots. Let's try this again. Why? Would that be a challenge? And what's the difference between your Allen wrench and my Allen wrench? Huh? It does make me quite annoyed. Quite annoyed. That means you went in this way. Well, wish I knew this before all that fudging around trying to get the key back in the slots. Uh, it appears that the key slot on the flywheel and the key slot on the shaft are not in alignment. Typical. So, just gotta fix that. Alright, at this point, as you can see, a couple of things happened that I failed to record. Uh, the first thing is, is I had to go out to Harbor Freight and get some pulley removers, and that was a whole ordeal. And uh, I pulled off the flywheel, and I was able to get that grub knot out, but boy, was it a pain in the butt. I uh, ended up just pounding in a uh, Torx bit inside the grub nut, and I was able to get enough uh, purchase on it to remove it. So there it is, folks. And here are the replacement grub nuts. The only issue I have with those is that they're not nearly as long as the original one, which is slightly concerning. Also, as you can see, I'm a terrible videographer. I did not record this part either, so I'll just explain it. I reinserted the flywheel onto the motor shaft, this time aligning the key slots on both the flywheel and the shaft and I pre-inserted the key, hopefully you can see it here, and I also pre-inserted the grub nut. So now um, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten her down and it should be good to go. So far so good, nothing appears to be stripping out. Just snug it up and I wanted something, awesome. And with the belt now uh, securely back in place, I can start buttoning the rest of the saw up and get it ready for a test cut. First things first, uh, I'll throw the blade in. In hindsight, I probably should have just done this last since I'm still um, fudging around inside the saw with my bare hands. But, uh, you know, I didn't get cut, so. Word of the wise for anyone watching, put the blade in last. And uh, the riving knife will go in. Got a lot of sawdust on the table saw uh, insert ledges, so I'm just gonna spritz them with some air and then just toss that insert right on in there. 
and I'll screw it in place and now it's secure. I guess I can't say taking all this stuff off was a total loss because I did learn a little bit about how my saw was assembled and now I know how to reassemble it properly should I ever have to go through and do this again, which I hope I never have to do. But if I do, you bet I'm going to make a video on it, some form of a video anyway. And if you want to be the first to know about it, you better hit that little bell icon. One thing I didn't really account for as I was uh, wasting my time disassembling the entire fence mounting mechanism was that when I reassembled it, I was really going to have to uh, calibrate the ruler um, just so that all my cuts are accurate. Uh, and this proved to be a little bit of a challenge, uh, but I think I got it down pretty good. Ah yes, the test cut. Well, with all that hard work and repair and everything, now I finally feel that much safer using this saw and uh, I don't have to worry about an atomic bomb going off in my face, or at least as much uh, anymore. So that's good. Oh, and look, the cut was perfect. If you watched this video all the way through, thank you. I hope you learned as much as I did while making it and not at the expense of all the time it took me. So go ahead and like and subscribe and enjoy the next video I put out whenever that may be.